All right, I will. I will start. There we go. <laughs> Hey, Billy, I uh, appreciate you doing this. Um, I guess first I was just going to ask, since we, we haven't fully talked to you, um, except for after the game, like what was your process of coming to Maryland and, and deciding to transfer here? And, and I know your brother is, is up here. So like, what, what are your brother's ties with Loxley and, and the program? Uh, I mean, coming here, obviously when I entered the portal, I was just looking for a good opportunity to, to have some sort of, you know, opportunity to play in the fall. Um, when I entered the portal, I was obviously reached out by a lot more schools than I think I anticipated. But when I got the opportunity here, um, it really seemed like a perfect fit just because, you know, relatively, obviously, my brother being here, but how close to home it was. Um, and I'm familiar. I'm a lot more familiar with this coaching staff than I think people may know about in terms of Coach Locks, Coach Enos, Coach Miller. When they were all at Alabama, I, I went to a couple of summer camps with them um, when I would be down there with my brother. So I've known them. They've known me since I was in like seventh or eighth grade. Um, so that was, that was obviously, you know, I felt very comfortable with their staff. Um, and obviously, you know, my dad went here for a couple of years. My brother works here. It, it really felt like, you know, the perfect fit in terms of being close to home um, and get able to, to get a good opportunity to play division one football and, and get a degree. So. And, and when you're going through the transfer process, I mean, I'd assume every quarterback is kind of doing the math on eligibility of, of the guy who's, the current starter. I mean, is that something you're looking at, is seeing how you might fit in eventually to, to being a starter? Yeah, I mean, I think definitely um, with the COVID year and the transfer portal rule. I mean, that's that's something everyone you know takes into consideration. But I think at the end of the day, while that is a factor, it was kind of more of like scheme as far as how I fit in. Um, you know, familiarity with the coaches and kind of what can I see myself playing there in the future, and if if I do see myself, can I be successful, you know, within the system and, and with the environment that I'm put in. Um, so I definitely, you know, took that into consideration. I, I won't even say I didn't, but I think there was obviously bigger factors that it came down to um, that ended up, you know, having me make my decision to come here. We'll go to Andy. Hey, Billy. Uh, I kind of want to ask about the, those Alabama camps you talked about when you're like a teenager and you go down there and, you, and you're hanging with your brother and, and with those you know, other Alabama quarterbacks, like what was that kind of like just as a, as a teenager kind of being with guys of that, that level? It was awesome. It was awesome. Yeah. I was, I think I went down there going into my freshman year, going into my sophomore year or going into my sophomore year and junior year. Um, and just to be around, you know, obviously my brother and all his teammates be, that was kind of my first time, I guess, getting a, uh, an up close look at like what a division one facility is like, you know, all that things. Um, it was definitely an eye opening experience. I learned a ton. Um, from him, Coach Enos, Coach Miller was uh, the offensive grad assistant at the time there. So I worked with him a lot during my camp. Um, and then we're obviously like with all the quarterbacks there, their quarterback room was obviously very talented in the couple of years that I went there. So, so being able to go to camp um, and get kind of like, you know, work with them um, in the drills and, and throw next to them and whatnot. So that those, those two or three summers that I went down there for those camps were obviously very cool. Um, and it was fun to obviously outside of that, I was able to, you know, go, go visit my brother and, and spend a week or two with him. That's awesome. Yeah. I'm trying to think of timeline in my head. I'm forgetting Tua wasn't, Tua wasn't there when, when you went, right? Or no, he was, Oh, he was. Okay. He so. was. Yeah. So that was, uh, I think my first year going there, my first summer going there was after Tua's freshman year. Um, so I, I was there for all the, all the good years. It's kind of funny, you know, I, I'm assuming, you know, you and your brother with, with, with two, or your brother and, and Tua together now, you and you and Talia together as a, a sibling uh, duos in the quarterback yep. room. <laughs> That's right. Uh, yep. I want to go back to Lake Braddock for a second. When you were a sophomore, rising sophomore, kind of filling the shoes of, of Jack, you had just got a you know state record for completions and all that. What was that kind of process mentally for you replacing a guy that had, I mean, those are kind of big shoes to, to fill in and, and you had to step in as a sophomore. Um, I mean, I think it was definitely uh, intimidating at first, but I think the off season and all the workouts we had, um, I remember that senior class did a really good job as far as kind of taking them under their wing um, and guys like Ronnie Altman, Quinn James, Joe Whiting, or all the, all the older guys did a good job as far as instilling confidence in me and kind of taking me under their wing um, and just, you know, kind of keeping me relaxed, keep, keeping me level-headed, my head on straight, kind of, you know, you got this, you prepare, you know, just as good as anyone else on the team, you know, you've, you've made all these throws multiple times in practice, so you kind of just got to go out there and, and do the same thing in the game, don't make it bigger than it is, um, which is definitely, you know, I learned a lot of lessons going, you know, making that jump 
from my freshman to sophomore year that I, I've taken with me for the rest of my high school, you know, playing and now into college. Um, but just, you know, don't make it bigger than it is. And, and as long as you prepare the right way, then, you know, everything should take care of itself come, you know, when you got to do it in a game. I suppose it's like a little, a little bit different when you're replacing a guy like Talia mid game, you know, as you've done twice this year, but like, were there lessons maybe even from high school that you kind of take, you still like kind of lean on when, when you go into the middle of an Indiana game or, you know, if you're, if you're playing this weekend, whatever it might be. I mean, yeah, I mean, I think definitely lessons that I've taken, but I've also been blessed, you know, to be around two really good teams in, in terms of the people I was surrounded by. Cause in both those, you know, scenarios, whether I was in high school or, or college now, I've been put into games as, you know, the backup or, or not the starter initially, whatever. And all my teammates have done a really good job as far as like rallying around me and giving me support. Um, so I think mentally that helps me obviously a lot to, to get settled in. Um, in terms of the lessons I've learned from being a sophomore and, and getting put in those, those bigger shoes early, it's just prepare the right way. Um, and if you do the right things, you know, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, it, it obviously makes it a lot easier to do it Saturday. Um, so that's, that's obviously, I'd say those are the biggest two things that, you know, that I've been able to take away since, since kind of having to, to fill that role in, in high school. We'll go to Varun. Hey, Billy. Uh, wanted to ask on that note about preparation, what do you do during the games, you know, on, on a normal day of Talia is healthy, what is your like just activity like on the sideline? I'll either stand, I usually stand really far in front of the offense or really far behind to kind of to watch, to kind of try to put myself into Leah's shoes like Coach Locks. One of the first, probably first or second game was like, stand back there, watch your coverage, you know, see what the defense is doing, make sure, because obviously you never know um, when your number's going to get called. So I stand, if anyone looks, I'm like 30 yards in either direction, just kind of watching, seeing the play call, seeing whatever we got called and, and kind of, Putting it in my head, if I was out there standing where Talia was, you know, what would I be thinking right now? What am I anticipating from the defense? And what, you know, what would my reaction be if that was the case? Um, so just try to stay locked in, stay locked in as best as possible, because I think it's very easy. You know, there's a lot of distractions, especially on the sideline that you may see if you're not playing, if you're not playing and kind of locked in the game all the time. So just try to stay locked in because, you know, obviously you never know when when it all could change in a, in a play or two. Yeah. And so you know, you're staying locked in, does that get exhausting or frustrating at times where, you know, you're staying locked in, but you're not coming into the game? No, I, I think if, if you stay locked in and I, I'm almost like a part of the game, you know, if, even though I'm not playing. Um, so while times, you know, it could be more like stressful if I'm sitting there watching like the, the play happen when in the game, you know, you're not thinking about it. You're just kind of, you're going with, with your level, you know, what you've prepared for. Um, that may be it, but I don't think it's frustrating. I think, you know, if anything, it makes it a little bit more intense for me when I'm sitting there watching it like play out um, on the sideline. And, and then on the note about preparation, uh, when you stepped into this role as starting quarterback in high school as a sophomore, you know, you're around much older kids, right? And you have to get them to kind of listen to you. Did the preparation, like how much you prepared, did that help you, you know, tell them like, hey, I'm serious about this? And is that something you're bringing here? Oh, uh, yeah. I mean, I think there's, there's the, there's both, you know, similarities and differences from that scenario to here. Um, I think definitely there, um, I obviously had a little bit longer of an off season with them in terms of the workouts. I think that was the biggest thing for me. Um, I think here, I, that it definitely was the same thing. Um, to some extent in the summer with all the conditioning and fall camp going through those tough workouts, you obviously, um, you kind of gain a lot of respect for teammates, you get closer, you, you come together, um, and that's how you, you know, you stay committed and connected with that thing, uh, in terms of the, the building the confidence. And obviously it's, it's tough being a younger player, um, when trying to lead, but with, with older guys that are, that are good leaders, it kind of makes it easier on you. Um, and I think just as long as I continue to prepare the right way and, and gain confidence in myself, it'll be easier to, you know, gain confidence in my teammates, um, as they, you know, see me doing the right thing. We get, you know, the timing down on routes, whatever, then it'll, it'll just be easier to, you know have that, you know, meshing go well on Saturday. So, you know, we don't feel any, any differences from whether Talia's playing, I'm playing, whatever it is. We'll go to Ben. Hey, Billy, I'm curious about, you know, what, what's your relationship like with Talia and what kind of things have you learned from him since coming to Maryland? A lot. 
uh, definitely, you know, coming in the summer, um, learning the offense in, at a very fast pace. Uh, Talia and, and the whole quarterback room, you know, they've been nothing but great in terms of helping me. But outside of football, I mean, Talia is great. We always we're always joking. Um, well, you know, playing games with each other. We, we talk a lot outside of football, uh, whether I see him at, at the apartment or, or wherever. Um, but he's been nothing but great. And, and obviously, I always try to pick his brain. He, he's obviously been in college football a lot longer than me um, to just try to try to get whatever I can from him, whether it's, you know, playing, how you prepare, practice, whatever it is, a certain route concept. Um, like we're always talking, talking ball in terms of whether we're playing a team or in fall camp. It's probably when I learned the most just because I, I was trying to take the most strides in, you know, in a short amount of time. Um, but he's been nothing but great. And the whole quarterback room really, you know, welcomed me with open arms in the off season. So it's definitely, definitely been a good time in there. Right. We kind of saw what you can do running the ball against Indiana, but Loxley says that you're more similar to Talia in the sense that you can really throw the ball. You know, how would you describe your style of play in that sense? Uh, I mean, I'd say, yeah, I mean, I'd like to think I can get it, you know, done throwing the ball and uh, running as well. I mean, at the end of the day, it's kind of whatever the defense allows for us to do um, in terms of whatever, whatever they, you know, if they want to load the box, we're obviously got to throw the ball. If they want to give us light numbers and I get, and I get some good reads, then I can, I can pull the ball and put my head down and run when I need to. Um, I think being in this offense, it allows, you know, us to be very multiple um, and take advantage of, you know, whether I need to run the ball or throw the ball. So I'd say, I'm, I, you know, whatever the defense gives us, and I feel confident um, in my abilities to, you know, take what they give us and make, make the best of it. And finally, you know, what just type of intangibles would you say that you bring to the team just from a locker room uh, off the field type of perspective? Uh, I mean, I, I think the biggest benefit, uh, my, my dad is a high school football coach. He's been for, I think, like 34 years now. So being a coach's kid, being around the game of football my whole life, um, I just think, you know, I, I feel like I can understand a team very well. Um, and, and obviously try to be a leader, a leader of the team and, and understand what, you know, what it takes to get a group of guys to, to come together and commit towards a common goal, you know, something that's bigger than ourselves. Um, so I think that's definitely been, you know, something that I've been blessed to, you know, kind of be born into, I guess you could say with, with my dad and my brother and the football background we have, but that's definitely something, you know, every time I, I step into a new locker room, new team, whatever it is um, that I look to kind of take and bring with me in terms of, you know, being a good leader and, and allowing, you know, the team to see that, that I take my stuff seriously and whatnot. Go back to Emily. Hey, Billy, uh, one very specific or two specific questions. Um, Loxley says you take 40% of the reps in practice. I just want to make sure I'm understanding that right. So that's like 40% of like with the first team offense or what does that mean? Uh, it depends. It depends on, on the given um, team period, but I mean, I, it, I'd say it honestly depends on the day because obviously with the flow of the season, as you get later into it, the there's no really, you know, ones and twos anymore, if that makes sense. You just kind of, you get the reps, um, you get the reps with whoever's out there at, at that point. Um, and they do a good job as far as rotating mm -hmm. constantly. So we're not always thrown to the same receivers. We're not always working with the same backs and whatnot. Um, so we're comfortable myself to Leah, whoever's out there, quarterback, whoever's out there, any position is comfortable with whoever they have to go on the field with at the time. And then uh, Loxley told us that when he was recruiting you, you reminded him of Andy Dalton, not just because you're redheaded. I, like, <laughs> I was just wondering if um, he ever told you that or if you ever. Yeah, he, you know. he's told me that uh, Andy Dalton, he's told me, and then a little bit of, of fire for Mac Jones. He's told me as well, I guess Mac Jones had an edge to him. So I guess those are two. Two, you know, good names to be compared to, but I'm sure, I'm sure as, as my time here goes along, I'm sure he'll, they'll be, you know, it'll change. I'm sure. I'm sure I'll remind him of somebody. Go back to Varun. On the note about practice snaps, uh, you guys, obviously Talia is a game time decision. Does the breakdown in snaps between you and him change at all this week? Just because, you know, you have, a increased chance of starting than you would on a normal week? No, I'd say that it's very similar. I mean, I'd say on the whole week, I maybe will take 10 more than I have in the past weeks, but it's, it's very similar to what it is um, every other week. So definitely, you know, take the reps I get. And then whenever I'm not in, try to get a mental rep, talk to Talia, talk to Eric, whoever, you know, the quarterback is in at the time, just so we can 
continue to do what we do on a week to week basis and prepare, you know, the best that we can. And has anything changed from that Monday to Friday process with you being in more of a position to start than before, maybe not in your preparation, but in maybe how other people around you are talking to you? No, I mean, I think that's, uh, when we had our team meeting Monday, coach locks talked about going back to the basics and, you know, just, don't make it bigger than it is, you know, go back to the basics, stick to your level of training and everything will take care of itself. Um, so that's definitely what I've been telling myself all week. Um, and I think the team responded to that. Well, I think we're just, you know, going back, treating it like a fall camp, one practice, you know, all locked in both, you know, mentally what we're not in physically, whether we're in the rep um, and just prepare the right way Monday through Friday. Cause as we figured out, you know, multiple times throughout the season, if you do the right things, Monday, Wednesday and on, everything kind of will take care of itself Saturday. It'll come a lot easier to us. We'll go to Wes. Hey, Billy, obviously you uh, started off uh, over three there, uh, throwing the ball against Indiana. Uh, I'm kind of curious about the the pros and cons of Maryland having, you know, so many passing, you know, targets there. Um, does it maybe make it, you know, easier for you to, you know, get used to first team reps, knowing that you could be throwing to any of the, you know, 10 receiving targets you guys have during practice, but does that sometimes also make it harder in the game to, you know, develop that connection when you have to go in on a short term, short term basis? Uh, I'd say, I, I wouldn't say there's any, there's any like, you know, fault to it. Um, I think our receiver room is, is loaded. So I think it makes it easier for me to come in, um, and know that whoever is out there, whether it's an older guy or uh, Octavian Smith, you know, a younger guy that's playing at the time, um, that I have all the confidence in them. I think they have all the confidence in me with, with what we've been able to do in practice and get, you know, our timing down. Um, so I think it definitely makes it easier in terms of, you know, across the board. When I look to my left and I look to my right, I know I'm going to have a playmaker out there. Um, and, you know, I have, you know, full trust and confidence in them to, to do their job and, and win their route. And, and they have the same in me to get them the ball. All right. Is everyone good? Can I guess one follow up? Where does your dad coach? Uh, currently at Annandale High School, but okay. he's, uh, yeah, he started at Annandale, coached there for, I want to say like 20 something years and then was at Lake Braddock when my uh, brother was there, left, went to like Annandale and Oakton, came back to Lake Braddock when I was there and now he's back at Annandale. Cool. All right. Thank you for your time, Billy. Appreciate it. Thanks, everyone. Thank you.